Hello and welcome to uh, hopefully the final gameplay video of this season as we're going to take a look today at a very cool Pokemon that just got featured basically at the global go fest but also in the in-person go fest in London where I got this one here as a trait. And I got, yeah, my my Heracross here. It's not a fully XL variant, it's only level 49.5. I'm literally missing one power up or exactly four XL candies, so I most likely have to walk them. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit awkward. I also spent a few um, rare XL candy on this Pokemon on accident because I didn't know that the auto function there for powering up the Pokemon also includes like the uh, rare XL candy that you have. So like for me, they took like, I don't know, 11 rare XL candy onto this Pokemon. Well, and if I, as I realized, I was like, oh no, why did I do this? They are so stupid. But yeah, today we're going to take a look at the pink Heracross here. And I actually have two handles, one of them built already to level 41. But I want to build, of course, my shiny variant, which is a 98% rather than the handles that I have because it looks just way, way cooler. Honestly, such an amazing shiny. But yeah, hopefully this is going to be today the final um, yeah battle video for the season of season, I think 15 it is currently. I think it's season 15 for the Go Battle League. By the way, um, some people are always confused by, um, when like a season starts, when I say like season 15, season 16, because the Antics says season 11 right now for this one. And most likely season 12 on the next one. Go Battle League was already um, available before Niantic introduced the season concept into Pokemon Go. So season 11 or like next down with season 12 are like the actual three month season that you see right now. Which is also now the same for Go Battle League. But Go Battle League was already available prior and had seasons prior. Which were actually a little bit shorter than the ones that we have right now. So those count towards it. That's why we are in like season 16 now after this one. After the season for Go Battle League and only at season 12 for Pokemon Go because it's like not correlating directly with each other. Now it does, but like they started at different points basically. But yeah, otherwise, we're going to have here a team, of course, that is very interesting. And I actually gained 200 points with this team. And if it wasn't like the end of the season, I most I would have done like a little bit of a longer video for this one as well. But I think like a lot of people are not as interested right now into the game. So I totally understand this one. But this team actually worked out super well for me. And I enjoyed it quite a bit. This team was a lot of fun to play. As Heracross was actually really decent. Like you had a lot of times where like Steel types came in and Heracross just completely destroyed them. And um, this team in general got me uh, 200 points plus, which is really cool. And I think like five sets or something with it. So I had a great time playing this team and it worked out really well. But what I had first uh, for the first three games, which are all won by the way, I had a Rayquaza in the lead instead of the Giratina. But then I still changed it even though I won all of them because I would have had a double weakness against the common fairy type Pokemon in like with my lead as well as with my back nine. Of course, you still have a dragon type Pokemon in the lead, but Giratina is a special one as you, you do mainly damage through Shadow Claw and Shadow Ball. So you have like basically neutral damage against Solicitation and um, Xerneas and you're actually going to be able to win the match up quite often. So definitely Giratina seems to be the better pick there, but also Giratina makes you a little bit weaker against something like a Rayquaza because both your lead as well as your Heracross in the back going to lose against it so choose your poison like you're always going to have like one kind of weakness so it's a little bit awkward there sometimes but still this team worked out super well for me climbed up 200 points and I might even try hard for the rest of the season because yeah we don't have that many days left anyway and maybe I'm going to try to still get onto the leaderboards but who knows but right now this hopefully going to be my final video for this season as we're going to be able to catch a move here Presses Blade going to be resisted on Heracross even though it does still do a ton of damage here we will be able to go ahead and go for the close combat now against the Dialga allowing us to destroy that one as well goodbye there and they're going to have their mail metal in the back which now going to get into range for one Omnius Wind and one Shadow Ball one Shadow Ball alone will not be enough but Heracross just was able to basically catch a move knock out one opponent knock out the next one with the close combat and now also kind of got some damage onto the mail metal showing its power off here which is really cool and especially as not even for the extra it's only level 49.5 so the extra one power up definitely going to make it even better actually maybe going to go ahead and try to go for the best body ribbon on this pokemon because it's so cool like honestly the shiny is just amazing but here for example is one of, one of the reasons why i went for the um Giratina now, as we're going to have the matchup against the Xerneas, which I'm actually going to be able to catch the Moonblast onto our Zacian, which is going to be nice because I'm not forced to use a shield, but I'm going to be forced to use a shield very soon, as they're actually going to swap into Dialga. 
you know, my favorite moveset onto the Azacian is, of course, the non-close combat variant, which is kind of awkward for this scenario here right now. But in general, I just like this match, like this moveset quite a bit, like having the the uh, wild shot basically going to allow you to have just one of the neutral nuke moves that are very cheap to get to, but also a very decent answer for the flying type Pokemon, which are quite a lot of them around right now, like Ho-Oh, for example, you really want to have an answer for it, and you really want to use it as like a bait for it, because your Pokemon in the back, the Heracross, does not appreciate the Ho-Oh, so here we're going to um, have a very good bait basically with his Asian, while it loses some matchups against steel type Pokemon, I still kind of like it a lot, the kind of, um, yeah, kind of what's called the moveset on this Pokemon. Here we're going to have a Pokemon in the back that I really like to see right now at least. It's going to be the Kyogre, which I have to destroy with my Giratina, otherwise I'm going to have a little bit of an issue here. But I will be able to just overfarm it quite a bit. I know that their energy dry after the Surf, they went straight for the Surf and they didn't do enough damage to get me into a range where I would even get knocked out by the opponent's Xerneas. I will be able to catch a move from the opponent, which is going to be the Close Combat. And like this, I can give the opponent a Rock Blast back, which is going to be enough to knock them out with one more fast move here, as our Heracross is just going to be able to destroy the opponent. Next game coming up, we're going to have a fairly neutral lead and a fairly interesting say up I just don't know really how to play against Lugia, because it's always kind of for me a little bit awkward. The thing is, our lead is going to get super effective damage from their fast move, of course they're going to get the boost here as well, um, but they're gonna get super effective damage from the fast move, while of course Zacian double resists this one, but our lead also does super effective damage against the opponent back there, so I don't know, like it's always kinda awkward if I want to swap out or not. Like this, I feel like I made a little bit of a stupid play and I don't think I re remembered, like I actually don't think I paid attention to this battle at this point of time, which um, going to be kind of visible soon as well. As of course the boost really mattered a lot here because I would have been able to take a sky attack fairly easy after otherwise. So it's a little bit of an awkward scenario as the opponent gonna go ahead and go into their man battle right now. I feel like if I paid more attention to the battle I might have had a little bit of an easier time but I can now see the final Pokemon for myself which is going to be the Ho-Oh which I will be able to hit with a Rock Blast here. But as you can see here, it does two shot, but we are not really getting to the moves in time. So I'm forced to use a shield here. They're gonna get the Sacred Fire off. We don't get the debuff, which is totally okay. But here, as you can see, we're literally missing one more fast move in order to get to the Rock Blast as far as I know. Yeah, exactly. One more fast move would have been all it takes. And we're gonna go down here, but I feel like without the boost, I would have won this game most likely again, because I would have had a better match up and a better alignment in general. So like, it just came down to the opponent boosting with a 12.5 chance on the arrow blast there against me and this won them the game so would have been different most likely if they um, didn't get the boost. Next opponent, Giratina lead. I don't like this one at all. I really don't like to have the Giratina in the lead unless of course I'm going to boost with uh, my Omnia's win. Then I'm totally fine with this because I can force a shield now from the opponent with this Omnia's win as well. I don't even have to go up to a Shadow Ball now as I will be able to um, still take an Omnius win from the opponent here thanks to the buff on, of my defense and I will be able to go for another charge move in time which will get not the knockout but I will get them low enough that I can just farm down with my Zacian and now I have a shield advantage and an energy advantage on my Zacian and I even get two fast moves off which is amazing for me. As we now see the opponent coming into their um, Xerneas it's going to be very decent for us because I don't want to have the opponent Xerneas against my Heracross in the back, I kind of realize there is a most likely their own Zacian in the back because they are running the Giratina double fairy line which I also put into my top team video. Very solid line to go for but I'm honestly feeling like this is going to be a little bit of a tough one as I'm going to be able to catch a move here. I hope that this is a close combat and it is a close combat but of course as said before it's very likely the Zacian and it is the Zacian here as you can at least still go ahead and go for a close combat which is going to do more damage than a Rock Blast for sure and actually going to put them into range for just one more charge move of my own Zacian especially after they going for the Wild Charge here right now. I will be able to just go for my own wild charge and knock them out with this one as they most likely running close common wild charge and I will be able to take this game home as the wild charge is going to be able to easily knock out the opponent after the four times debuff onto their defense and we can move on into the next game. Groudon in the lead. A lead that's actually really awkward for me and you're going to see me making an interesting play here. I always swap after seven onto my hair across. And I always was able to catch the move. Literally there was not a single time where I wasn't able to catch the move. But also my opponent makes a great play and goes up to another Presence Blade and catches the move onto the Giratina, which is making this a little bit awkward. So 
Great counterplay from the opponent here, and this is going to put us in a really, really bad spot, basically. As I'm gonna go ahead and go for the bait here, hoping that the opponent is going to shield this move up, and they do, which is fine. And I will be forced to use my own shield as they're gonna go for their own Shadow Ball, which is cool. And I don't know... Okay, I'm going to be able to go for my own Shadow Ball here against the opponent as well. Let's see what they're going to do. They're going to let this move go through. As you're going to see... Ah, yeah, okay, this is going to be game over. I can already forfeit at this point of time. They have basically a perfect alignment at this point. As the Giratina has nowhere to go against the opponent's um, Ivaltar there. There was nothing I could have done. Let's take a look at the next game. Great lead for us. As we're going to see now the swap into the Giratina. I will try to get the shield advantage here basically, which I will be able to get, and I can now swap into my own Zacian, which can take a move, but I will be able to shield the first move up because there's no way that they're gonna go for the bait first, and even if they're going to let this move go through here, which they might do, most likely not gonna do, I would be able to still go for a wild charge later on against the Kyogre. So that's going to be a fine matchup for me. I'm going to let the Shadow Ball go through here, and I make a mistake here. I don't think this could be a Shadow Ball yet, but I'm still going to use a shield, and I guess Omni has more that he would have knocked me out from this range already so i don't think it's actually a mistake but maybe i should have went for one more fast move after this one because now i'm barely missing out of the wild charge there i need like one more fast move but no now we're going to see the Dialga coming in against us and can we outspeed them we can outspeed them but is this enough to win the game for us this is going to be still a very tough one because we don't have shields left the opponent going to go for the full farm down i will be able to get the next close combat off at the perfect time but can we still win the game here with our Giratina? We have to go for the Omnius win. Is this enough? It's a very, very weak move here. But it is enough to knock out the opponent's Kyogre. And we can move on into the next game coming up. We will see the Mewtwo in the lead. Shadow Mewtwo? Definitely worse than the normal Mewtwo right now. Like, there's no one that can tell me, yeah, Shadow Mewtwo is so much better. It's, I think, kind of cooler as a Seisop, especially if you run Ice Beam on it. I would actually wouldn't go for the Shadow Ball on the Shadow Mewtwo, because Ice Beam is going to allow you to hit those flying types a little bit better. For example, the Velta, which might swap, want to swap in against you. And I feel like Shadow Ball, Shadow Ball always kind of is in an awkward spot, because when do you really use it? It's basically just against Steel-type Pokemon, which are kind of rare, and even with, like, Side Strike, you're going to two-shot a Dialga, which is kind of wild. But, um, otherwise, Shadow Ball, you're only going to use against really Metagross, where it's really nice or useful to have. And otherwise, like, it's not really the greatest move to have. So, I don't know. Like, I feel like Ice Beam kind of is cool right now and also Focus Bust. If I have a Shadow variant, I would not go for the Shadow Ball. I feel like against Giratina, you still kind of want to have two side strikes. I actually don't know. Maybe the matchup against Giratina changes a little bit with the Shadow Mewtwo. This could be the case. I think as a normal one, does like around like 70 to 80% with one Shadow Ball. Maybe it's going to put them perfectly into farmland range with one Shadow Ball. Could be totally wrong about this one, but I don't know. Usually, Shadow Mewtwo is not as ideal as, for example, the normal one here, but here we're going to be able to get the knockout easily, and of course, we're still going to be able to knock out the Dialga, and this is the thing as well, with play rough over close combat, you're still going to be able to two-shot them, and one um, close combat doesn't knock out the Dialga anyway, so it's totally fine. Horrible lead for us, we're going to swap out into the Heracross here, because it's going to be the um, yeah, weaker answer basically. I'm going to let this move go through and I'm going to basically just sacrifice my Heracross. But the opponent decides to go into their own Metagross, which is going to be amazing for us because now I will be able to align my um, Giratina against them here. I can go for a full farm down and I made a huge mistake. I should have definitely not swapped out in immediately into this Pokemon because now I'm locked into this Pokemon and I have to hope that they're going to wait. Which they do, so I am actually able to swap in time, and I'm still going to be able to go into my Zacian, go up to the play rough here right now, which will kill time from the clock, which is amazing for me, as they're going to have the Excadrill in the back. And of course, now we are missing the close combat. Like, that's definitely the case here. We are really would like to have the close combat right now, but my only play is to go for a play rough right now, which they're going to still shield. And at this point, I need to store for the clock. As you can see right now, the clock is coming up, kind of ticking up there right now. And I can swap out in time into my Giratina, go for the Shadow Ball, get the opponent insanely low with this, not going to knock them out. But they are now in range for just one Snarl, and this is all we take. We're actually going to still knock them out beforehand anyway. And one player off is all we need to knock out the opponent's um, Dragonite here. So we were able to come back from this one after a horrible lead with also like not the ideal safe swap for us. 
Let's take a look at the final game. Groudon again in the lead. You know already my play here. I'm going to swap into my Heracross to uh, basically resist the Presence Blade. I know this is kind of stacking the Heracross completely because it can go for the Fire Punch afterwards, but this is my best play in my opinion. As my opponent makes a completely weird play. Like, why would you want to swap into your Dialga here right now? I just don't get it. Speaking of, I just don't get it. I shouldn't have done this one either because they can actually still get to an Iron Head. So this was kind of stupid on both sides. Just go into my um, Giratina, I would have been fine. And I didn't have to use a shield at all. But at the end of the day, I don't think it really matters too much. As you know, we're going to be able to go for a wild charge against the opponent's Alugia. We're going to get to another one here immediately afterwards. And of course, our fa the fast move is going to be resisted, but the charge move is going to do some decent damage. As you can now go ahead and let this move go through. It's going to be a Presses Blade, but I'm still going to have a ton of energy here. So I can go for an Omnius Wind Bait, going to get the shield from the opponent, and I get the boost. And this boost actually matters more than you might think. I will be able to go for another charge move, gonna get another boost. We are double boosted right now. This is absolutely insane. I don't know why this happens here right now, but we're gonna go for a fire punch. And I was like, okay, we're gonna die from this boat move right now but it's another fire punch which literally does no damage we had double boosted here right now against the opponent omnius wind comes through going to get the knockout and we will be able to win this final game and yeah this team worked out super well i hope we're going to have some season news today and yeah if you enjoyed this video feel free to leave a like subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you then bye bye